welcome to Scorched Earth and the general reading for the sign of Aries, Sun, Moon or Ascendant for the month of October. October, really? I hope you are. Using the uh, Pagan Other Lands Tarot for you today. Do I have anything to tell you? Uh, there will be an extended at the end of this reading if it resonates with you and you would like to go a little bit deeper. That will be the first link in the description box. The second link is the... Uh, six month overviews for each of the signs that I did that run from July to December. I have not those down in price um, because we are rapidly going through that period. So if you haven't checked it out and you'd like to have a look, they are there too. Obviously, if you support me on Patreon, you get access to all of that stuff for no extra cost. So uh, that's all good. Do I have anything else to tell you? Uh, we are most certainly in the grip of Mercury retrograde. As you watch this, the last one of the year, <clears throat> I had an abortive attempt to uh, live stream last weekend and I've had a number of uh, technological mishaps recently so I think I'm in for a bit of a kicking in this, uh, this retrograde. But, you know, usual rules apply. It's nothing to be too worried about. <coughs> it being Mercury, it tends to disproportionately affect uh, matters of communication and technology. So, you know, be a little uh, forgiving in your interpretations of what people say to you, uh, because often you may be talking at cross purposes. If you have contracts to sign, if it's possible at all to hang off for a little while until the retrograde is over, then do that. But if it isn't, then make sure that you're double checking and triple checking contracts so you don't get bitten in the arse at some point later on down in the line. Um, what else? Yeah, I mean, it, it's a reflective energy. It's about looking back over what you have done, making sure you've tidied everything up properly in your own mind and so that then you can release it and let it go, you know. And so wherever you can use that energy as it is meant to be used, taking time to just make sure that you've got no loose, en loose ends, you know, missing anywhere, then, you know, it, you'll find yourself supported in that. So... Let's have a look and see what's going on with you. Uh, three cards for Aries, please. Thank you. So in your recent past, you have the Eight of Cups. Quite a mournful looking Eight of Cups, that one, I always think. Maybe the moon's looking there. How about present energy for Aries? Thank you. Teeter out. I've got the Knight of Swords. Did sort of topple out backward, uh, inverted, but we'll see what it said. And um, what's coming towards Aries, please? Um, thank you. We have <clears throat> the Three of Wands. We have the Two Swords at the bottom of the deck. And the, there is a feeling here of, of, of action needing to be taken soon. Not yet. And thank God not yet, because you still haven't quite decided in which direction you're going to be moving. But I do notice that the Justice card and the Moon and the Chariot are sat behind this Two of Swords. And it feels like a cleaner energy than you've had for a while. Definitely preoccupied with, at this point, doing the right thing. Bringing balance and harmonious you know, energy to the situation that you're in, but also to your internal space. And this is quite important, Aries. It feels like a clearing out has gone on till we come down to the chariot. And it's like what you actually want, where you actually want to go, you know. What is it that Aries and Aries alone, you know, wants in life? And where are there people who are in alignment with that energy too? But I do like it because it does seem to indicate somewhat of an uptick in your doing energy at the moment, right? Like we've got no ones apart from the three of ones and it did kind of fall out sideways. I just want to point that out. But nevertheless, it is there. Let's get some clarifiers and see what's going on here. So tell me about this Eight of Cups, please. What's the Eight of Cups here? Okay. We have the King... Uh, don't. We have the Knight of Stones, which is the Knight of Pentacles. Uh, the Eight of Cups. And we have the Three of Cups as well. Interesting. So some assessment of the people that you find yourself in amongst at the moment. Tell me about the Knight of Swords. There we go. We've 
we've got the six of swords sits in very nicely with the eight of cups here so we have the knight of swords thank you we've got the eight of pentacles and we've got the nine of swords but don't worry about that because i'm using the wild no i'm not what am i using Wildwood, the Wildwood Tarot. And the meaning of the Nine of Swords is different in this deck to a normal one. So tell me about this Three of Wands. We've got the High Priestess. Ooh. And we've got the Lover's Card. I actually really like the direction of this. Like I said, it does feel like there's a clarification of your energy going on at the moment. The way that you've got there may have been very uncomfortable and very, very difficult because I think that you've been wrestling with some really big things in your life um, and certainly in your internal space for some time now. But it kind of feels like you've hit bedrock. And by that, I mean, like, there's no more digging to be done yet here and now. It's about sort of consolidating what you have, you know, what insights you've got and uh, making sense of that before starting to construct some way of going back up again. At the bottom of the deck, we do have the Wheel of Fortune, followed by the Six of Cups and then the World card. And so it seems like Mercury Retrograde may be quite important for you. To close something out well obviously i mean that's what the retrograde energy is for but like the six of cups is a bit in this deck it's called reunion and it's about the past <coughs> but with the wheel of fortune it sort of indicates that there is something to be learned about your past your response to the past your emotional you know setup if you will before you can progress here to the world and so it might be a little bit up and down, but I feel like it's more up than down for you, Aries, if I'm honest. You know, like, like I said, we come back to this two of swords, there's a definite sense of decisions needing to be made. And, and they are impending decisions, but they're not quite yet in front of you. And I don't think that you will need to make these decisions um, in a way that results in action by you until you have worked through what it is that you already know and you've put it all in the right place for you. So we start off in the recent past with the Eight of Cups. And like I said, there is quite a mournful quality to this. This does not feel like a head held high, sailing off into the distance, a big fuck you to everything that's left. You know, this is something a, a bit more difficult. It can talk about moving away from situations that are, you know, no longer serving us. But with the Eight of Cups, because it is emotional in nature, because of the cups, it, it tends to be the emotional responses that we have the you know, emotional circumstances that we are attached to so we know that it's very very easy to walk away from a situation but sometimes we take all of the emotions that that situation caused in us with us and we can carry those around for decades and most of us do until we get to a point where we start to release those things and we understand that past situations are still informing the present you know but with this knight of pentacles here and this Three of Cups. It, it feels like you spent some time in assessment of the people that are around you. And you're seeing people differently. You know, what might have been at some point, historically at least, a support network for you where you felt like a, you know, a really intrinsic part of, of whatever this situation was. And, you know, everybody was equal and everybody had their part to play. You know, it was it was coming together with other people to create something that was bigger than just the sum of its parts. I feel like that's broken down for you, Aries, now. And I feel like, well, for sure, you're moving away from it, you know, because you are growing and you are evolving. And like I said, you've been dealing with some very challenging things internally for a long time now, months and months and months. And the result of that is that sometimes you just outgrow people, you know. And I think, but interestingly, what just heard was some of you felt like other people had outgrown you and they'd kind of 
left you behind and then wandered off. And that might be true to some extent. But I think in reality, what's actually happened is that you are you have been the one who was changing Aries and everybody else was staying the same. Now, going it alone is not is not something that's alien to Aries. It's something that's actually you know, quite fundamentally built into you. It's just like, you know, there's a direction. There's where I need to go, you know, and there's all of the determination and the faith in yourself and all of the willpower that goes along with that. But for some reason, it feels like you, you, you've been on mute in some ways this year, Aries while you're trying to work out what it is that makes you so uncomfortable about everything, anything, all the things. And the Knight of Pentacles, which is this Virgo energy, is kind of like understanding now what is important and going, actually, do you know what? It's away from this group here. It's going off in a slightly different direction. And maybe the Eight of Cups is the feeling of guilt in some ways that you have that you're going in a different direction now and certainly because it's easy to be enthusiastic about going off in a different direction if everything is rosy and wonderful you know if these new opportunities just popping up in right left and center and you're like oh this is brilliant you know and you get carried along with the uh, with the joy <clears throat> of actually getting out there and experiencing something new but i don't feel like that's been the case for you this year aries you've just been sort of sat with yourself and that was that was very displeasing and very uncomfortable at times but just like with your sister fire sign of leo it's almost like there was more for you to learn in the stasis than there was if you went gallivanting off and started loads of new things. Like, um, Leo's been held for, for eight months for the absolute lack of direction anywhere. They can't just, they just cannot do anything. And it's not for the want of trying. Absolutely not for the want of trying. But for whatever reason, <coughs> the universe decreed that Leo must stand still and must learn to be okay with standing still. And there are lots of other things that were going on for Leo there, but it's a similar sort of thing for you. Like Aries, we've spoken before about how, like Sagittarius, often the way that Aries runs ahead is to avoid looking backwards. And because looking backwards contains pain, you know, it contains things that might sometimes may threaten the ego too. And well, like nobody likes that, nobody enjoys that kind of energy. And so, Sagittarius and Aries always moving, never standing still. Leo's a little better at standing still, but honestly, they've need to needed to learn some patience. And as a Leo myself, you know, I hold my hands up in that one. I thought I'd learned all the patience I needed, but apparently not. So <clears throat> there's a fundamental understanding of what is important now to you. And I feel like it's different and it can be markedly different or it might be very subtly different to where you were six months ago. But I think a, a huge part of this is leaving behind people that you thought would be in your life forever. And it explains the mournful feeling that you have coming out here. Thank you. The, the other thing was that so just as this time that you spent doing nothing, I'm going to say doing nothing, but we know that you're not doing nothing, right? But certainly not having adventures. It's put you in touch with a part of yourself that is uncomfortable with you, Aries. And I think that this is where the insights have been coming from because as you've tackled each little bit of you that you feel is quite uncomfortable about yourself, I think that you see the reason now why you are surrounded by a particular group of people as you are, right? And observation is processing, right? So as you've become aware of this, so you can't unknow it, 
And once you become aware of it, you see the reason why you've got these particular set of people in your life and you see how perhaps they have not been the best for you. But you've seen also how you've allowed this group of people to make up the majority of, of who surrounds you, right, at this point. And, yeah, n now it's like, well, I am not really part of this. I'm not really part of this tribe. I need to move away. They need to move away. Like, there's a, there's a divergence going on here. Now, when we move into your current energy, we've got the Knight of Swords, who I thought came up in the reverse. But I wasn't sure. It kind of tipped at the last moment. And the Knight of Swords is about is about communication. Ultimately, it's about the way that you express yourself to other people, and it's pretty fast. It's pretty hasty. And as I'm saying that, I do feel actually that the card should be in the reverse here because because the the, the Knight of Swords is about the transmission of information. And what I'm not feeling from you here are big, deep conversations with other people. What I feel is you sitting in conversation almost with yourself. And that isn't... The information that's coming up in there isn't really for the ears of other people. You know, it's for you to hear and then for you to sift through and see what you feel about all of these things. It's certainly not communicating it to other people because I said this is really fast it's really hasty it's kind of tripping over your words in in the uh, in the need to get something expressed and I think that that aspect of you perhaps was more um, in play earlier on in the year when you were trying to explain yourself and trying to make people understand what you were going through and you know, to a degree, not the full extent of it, but, you know, just trying to give some manner of explanation to people. I think that you just stopped with that area. So, um, uh, you may have become quite withdrawn, but it's not like you're sitting in misery. It's like there, you've only got so many spoons in a day, right? S spoon theory, tumbler thing, right? <coughs> And so many of your spoons have been going on making sense of what it is that you have been experiencing, but there just aren't that many left over now. And, and I think to, to a large degree, you haven't really got anywhere with trying to explain things to people. And so now it's become deeply internal. What we have underneath here is the Six of Swords the Eight of Stones, which is the Eight of Pentacles, and the Nine of Swords. And like I said to you, the Nine of Swords here is a different meaning to the normal Nine of Swords. I'm going to show it to you first, right? Uh, the key word at the bottom of the card is dedication. We've got a woman walking along. She's got her eyes closed. She's walking along a fairly, you know, uneven path and she's holding a bow and arrow in her hand and she looks like she's there are arrows all around her and they look like they've been thrown at her you know, but every single one of them has missed, she's got one in her hand but she's not firing it off anywhere like it's, it's in her hand and it's resting on the bow, it's actually resting in the wrong direction altogether she has it in her hand. That is an ace there that she's holding. And all of these other arrows kind of surrounding her. It can feel, I think, like you have been persecuted quite badly this, this year, Aries, for whatever reason. But I like the fact that you are finding your feet with this. Like she's navigating, I mean, with her, with her eyes closed, right? It, it's not about what's going on outside. It's all about the internal stuff. And the dedication that you are now showing to the work that you are doing within, and I will draw your attention to the work card that we have literally before there, is absolutely essential at this point because it feels like you're starting to learn to use other senses that have been somewhat dormant in you or, or, or overshadowed by other aspects of the way that you have done things before. You know, there's such a significant change in the way that you are showing up here 
say compared to this time last year or actually last time last year was like Mars retrograde wasn't it and that was full that was fucking awful like I felt that too and not even my planet you know fire sign but a bit earlier on last year and so what we don't have here is a focus on action and beginning new things and, and, and incinerating anything that might get in your path. It's quiet contemplation. It's addressing issues that you perhaps have been running away from for a long time and sitting with them, doing your work and becoming bit by bit more proficient in how you go within what you're looking for and what you do with what you find when you get there, you know. Six of Swords is a beautiful card. I like it more than most other depictions of it because we've got somebody in this amazing swan boat. I mean, it is absolutely amazing. Leaving under the light of the moon. But they're alone and they're strong and they're doing their thing. You know, there's, there's quite a... Quality would you use to describe the Six of Swords as you generally see it? It's there's an aspect of being saved in the standard depiction of it. You know, we have a woman and a child huddled in a boat, and we have a man, you know, sort of gondoliering them away, and they're going from choppy waters into into calmer waters. Right? They 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 look to me like they have been extricated from somewhere and they've escaped. And they're being rescued, effectively. But neither the woman nor the child are finding it within them to be joyful about that. They're obviously leaving behind something that has been very, very, very difficult. And rather than relief and joy, they're just huddled together in the boat. You know, they're just trying to keep each other safe. This one. This man has a far stronger pose and he is alone in the boat. Right. Off under the light of the moon. There aren't people with you here. Like everything is solitary, apart from what you're moving away from. Everything is solitary. And under the light of the moon, you know, you've been on a really challenging internal journey. But you stuck with it even when you didn't want to, even when you felt like giving up. And I'm pleased to report, I think that that's going to bear fruit for you, Aries. I really do, because yes, this sort of came out sideways. So this is coming towards you. I pay close attention to the way that the card comes out right now. It did come out sideways. It's a bit of equivocation here. This would be a very strong stance of that this is where I'm going and this is what I'm doing. And I don't think that you're quite sure of what that is yet. I don't think you are. This would be a lack of movement in any direction, right? Or a block or a delay on it. This feels more like caution to me. It feels like I will know where I'm going and what I'm doing when I know it when the energy of these cards here the chariot the moon the justice card and the two swords have all done their thing like they're sitting behind that once this is out of the way oh, screaming child why <clears throat> once these things have been dealt with here then this dissolves this goes away and at that point i feel like the three of wands will turn the right way up only wand card it's the only bit of fire that we've had for you in the entire reading um aries you don't have any issue with doing right there's, there's no intrinsic deep lesson for you to learn in doing you are ruled by mars right it, it's all about taking action for you but everything else is what has been um requesting attention for you during this time, right? So, although it's sideways, it is going to go up soon, once all of this stuff is dealt with. But underneath here, we've got the High Priestess 
and we've got beloveds. And this is interesting, very interesting to me, not least because the High Priestess is an extremely internal card. It's about as opposite to your energy as it's possible to get. And it's Pisces. Okay. <clears throat> Pisces is the last um, sign in the zodiac, and you are the first. Mm, the cyclical cycle of everything, the cyclical nature of everything, means that you know when you hit the end, just as you do with the world, or with the ten, or with the king, you know, whatever, where you do then is you cycle back to an ace, or the fool, you know, the, the very beginnings of things. From Aries, you go right the way around the zodiac to Pisces, and then, presumably, we're back to Aries again, right? It's no less powerful energy than Aries energy, Pisces. It gets, it, it annoys me how much stick Pisces gets for being wishy-washy. It's the culmination of the Zodiac, right? I'll stop waffling. It's the culmination of the Zodiac. It contains Pisces as a sign. Everything that has come in the Zodiac before it, right? is that that end point and the importance of this coming out here for you is that you are coming to the end of this particular difficult period I, I feel that very very strongly because you have learned something that the high priestess is associated with wisdom and specifically emotional wisdom and that is what you've had an insight into in the last, well, it's been the whole journey for you in the last few months. I, th I would say actually mostly for the whole of 2021, right? Possibly even before that. Maybe starting with the Mars retrograde last year. It's, it's an understanding that there's an awful lot of work that can be done that doesn't require you to even move a muscle. Now, as a fire sign, I would advise that you do move your muscle, get your heart rate up, do things that make you sweat, right? Because as fire signs, that's really, really important to our emotional stability. But it's not been the nature of what you've been undertaking this year. And the high priestess is associated with passivity, right? Not doing a thing, sitting there in a state of wisdom, you know, being an oracle possibly, you know, it, it's really really powerful card of knowing and of secrets being revealed and you know not only have you had the moon card there in the shadow cards at the bottom of the deck but we also have it very very strongly here with the eight of eight of cups we have it strongly again in the six of swords Both cards of the internal, both cards of things that are hidden, that are secret, that are now accessible by you. <clears throat> Your next movement forward, when it happens, will not be intellectual. It won't be, I sat and I've reasoned all of these things out, right? This possibly has been about getting you in touch with your intuition in a way that you haven't been before, because... The Lover's card is a card of manifestation. It's a strong card of manifestation. It's actually about a choice more often than not, you know, it, and it's not about choosing one thing or an, over another. It's about the act of standing up and going, I am now going to make a decision about my life and I'm going this way or I'm going that way. Not something, generally Aries, that you have a problem with before, but this is a real gut pull in a particular way. Right? This is your intuition taking over and going, this is the right direction for me now. And it's going to feel very, very new to you because although it's like the way that you have always done things, it feels like it's coming from a different point because there are things in you that have been gently washed away by this period that you're in. And you may not like the fact that they've washed away because some of that's going to involve people. But it's like what was underneath all of that is being dealt with, is being let go. So now from, from for October, for you, it's about trusting your intuition moving forwards. Because like I said right at the beginning of the reading with the chariot card there, 
what does Aries want? You. What do you actually want? Not what you thought you wanted a year ago. Like, what is it that you actually want? What is it that you were trying to avoid with the things that you wanted before? You know? <coughs> there seems to be a far more considered think before you speak, think before you act, think before you move kind of energy going on with you here. Aries. Because before, quite often, you would rush off in a direction before really giving it any kind of thought. And with the cards that I've got here, it's suggesting that that not only prior thought is quite important, but also what your intuition is telling you. Because you seem to have stopped trying to run away from things. Now it's about aligning your energy and working out where you want to go, not, you, not what you want to run away from. I hope that that makes sense. Right, I am going to go over to Vimeo now and do the extended. So if you're interested in that, like I said, that's the first link in the description box. I'm going to focus on October and uh, see if we can't get some more details here. Because it, it feels possibly like October may not have movement for you, but it has the potential for movement. And I would like to explore that a little bit more. Yes, so I'm going to go and do that. Know that I love you all very, very much. Take care of yourselves. I'll see you soon.